What's up guys and welcome back to Gabe Miller Music. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made from scratch the drop in the intro. In this case, I'm using Reaper as my DAW. I'm using samples from my free sample pack that I'll link to in the description. Uh, Serum as my main synth and also the plugin Defacer by Audio Assault. This is kind of a distortion and bit crushing and other such effect plugin. So to start this video off, let's look at the sound that started this whole idea. And I didn't screen capture making it from scratch, but I did get a screen cap showing all the pieces that went into it, starting with a custom wavetable based off of one of my own sounds from a previous dubstep song. As you can hear, the thing that really brings it to life is that filter. These kind of filters have been used a lot in the past couple years in kind of modern rhythm and dubstep, and this ended up being the nice basis for kind of a screechy, metallic sound. So far, this was a perfectly adequate, but rather cliche rhythm bass sound. So I brought it into Defacer and started adding some distortion and otherwise just trying to dirty it up. Quite a bit of that was unusable, but I ended up messing around with it some more and finding a sweet spot. At this point, I rendered the sound out because for some reason I can't use LFO tool and actually have stuff successfully duck on virtual instruments all the time. Don't know what that's about, but I also wanted to save CPU so it works out. And as you can hear there, I was able to use LFO tool to shape the sound. It was still missing something though, so I messed around with adding a reverb with a really small room, and that really brought it to life. To get the original bass patch and the really distorted version to kind of meld together, I did some more processing on the original version. And then put that off to the side a bit to work on getting some proper sidechain, or in this case, just ducking from LFO tool and some drums. That clap sample is something I recorded out in the field. I happen to have my Zoom recorder with me and I happen to be in a really echoey building. So I just turned it on real quick, recorded myself clapping and snapping a couple of times for this magnificent long reverb tail. That's also available in my free sample pack. There are no download gates or any BS like that. And I ended up using it for the first time in a track here. I also mentioned that snap, I also brought that one in and offset it a bit to get this flam effect like this. And finally, I brought in a bit more of a kind of standard electronic clap just to layer that in there and fill the sound out a bit. Then I added an open hi-hat sample. So let's take stock of the drop that we've got so far. At this point, I rendered out the original bass sound and messed with the levels and the processing a bit to get it to layer nicely in with the distorted bass sound. And as you're about to hear, playing the original sound or not playing the original sound gives two very different tonalities to this bass sound, which will be very nice later for creating some variation within the arrangement. So at this point, I had a pretty solid foundation for a drop going. So now it was time to start expanding on it and fleshing it out. So the first thing to do is to get some kind of intro growl. So I took the beginning bass that I started with and modified it a bit to get this.
What I really wanted now was to have some kind of call and response going on between the main bass and something that it could alternate with. So now I duplicated the intro bass, shortened it a bunch, and made some more modifications to get an entirely different sound. Then I could drop that into a couple of places to get the desired pattern. I also modified the main sound to get kind of this super saw-ish effect and put that in there to fill the gap between the intro bass and the main pattern. So now I've got the first fourth of my drop. So the way I typically like to think of drops is you have your first section that establishes the pattern, your second section that deviates from the pattern a bit but kind of returns to that main hook, and then for the second half you repeat the first half but switching up something major. In this case, for the second half, I'm gonna end up switching out the drums and switching out the tonality of the main bass, but I'll get to that later. For now, the big thing that I wanted to switch up for this second quarter of the drop is to change the intro bass. So in this case, I got a saw wave, then layered in a distorted sine wave that produces this phase cancellation beating effect and threw some distortion on top of that. From there, I could make the second half of the drop. For that, I duplicated everything, muted every other kick, and then put a snare there in its place. I also deleted the original bass patch in the second half of the drop, because as I showed earlier, the distorted bass can either stand on its own or be layered with the original bass. Either way, it sounds good, and since it's nice to have some variation over the course of the drop, why not use each option at different times? All that being said, here's the final drop. And that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to hear more dubstep and other bass music from me, you can click or tap up over here somewhere. And if you'd like to watch videos where I show you how I make more dubstep, you can click or tap down over here. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back with a new video next week. Peace.